as the 1800s came to a close, there were several reasons to think the new century, the 1900s, would be a century of peace, starting with the modern Olympic Games. In 1894, Pierre de Coubertin of France founded the International Olympic Committee. The purpose of the committee was to bring back the Olympic Games of ancient Greece for a modern society. The first modern Olympic Games were held in Athens in 1896, where 245 participants came from 14 different countries. These very first modern games were open to men only, but four years later, women made their Olympic debut in tennis and golf at the 1900 Games in Paris. In 1896, winners were rewarded with an olive wreath and a silver medal, while the runners-up received a bronze medal and a laurel wreath. Gold, silver, and bronze medals that we are familiar with were not awarded until 1904. The 1912 Games in Stockholm, Sweden, were the first to boast the presence of nations from five countries, as well as both men's and women's swimming events. When Cobertin revived the Olympic Games, only summer sports were included, but in the 1920s, the IOC reacted to the growing popularity of snow sports and ice sports by holding an international winter sports week in Chamonix, France in 1924. The bottom line with these Olympic Games was an effort to promote nationalism being expressed on the playing field instead of on the battlefield. Another instrument for peace at the turn of the century is the Nobel Peace Prize. Alfred Nobel was a Swedish chemist who experimented for years with explosives made from nitroglycerin. But this was extremely dangerous, and even his own brother died in an explosion. In 1866, he created a new mixture, which was safer, and he called this dynamite. He got a patent for that in 1867, and subsequently, with railroads and other industries that needed rocks blasted away, um, he became very wealthy. His intention was only to build a construction tool to blast rock, dig tunnels, build canals, but ultimately militaries experimented with dynamite cannons. However, dynamite was really too powerful to use as a bomb, and so other gunfire techniques were invented. Regardless of the seemingly ironic connection between the inventor of dynamite and the Nobel Peace Prize, Nobel was an outspoken defender of peace in his lifetime. In his will, he set aside $9 million to be invested and used for a peace prize to reward people who worked for peace. Some noteworthy recipients of the medal and cash award have been Martin Luther King, Mother Teresa, and the Dalai Lama, but many of the recipients are relative unknowns before winning. Four U.S. presidents have won the prize, including President Obama, who was given the award in 2009 during his first year in office. The first woman to win the Nobel Peace Prize was an Austrian named Bertha von Suttner. When she was younger, she had briefly worked for Nobel and remained a lifelong friend of his. Many speculate that von Suttner was the inspiration behind Nobel's Peace Prize. Um, but she was a peace activist herself who wrote a best-selling book called Lay Down Your Arms. She's also the only woman to attend the first Universal Peace Conference. Delegates from 26 countries attended the conference, which was held, sorry, which was called for by Tsar Nicholas II of Russia. That many countries had not met in a general conference since the 1815 Congress of Vienna. Remember, by the end of the 1800s, imperialism and the quest for colonies engaged many European countries in an arms race. And Russia, which, remember, was not as industrialized as the other nations, was falling behind. Tsar Nicholas hoped the countries could all agree to reduce their arsenals of weapons. This was not to be. However, the delegates did establish the Hague Tribunal to be a world court that could settle disputes peacefully.